In this video, I'm going to show you how to use watercolor pencils in portrait painting with 10 tips. My first tip is to make sure your sketch is working for you for a smooth painting process. Maybe you've noticed how easy it is to lose our sketching lines when we add any type of watercolor paint. Here, I only emphasize the dark parts like the nostrils, the gap between the lips, and the hollow area between the nose ridge and the eyes. My second tip is to limit yourself to as little as 3 to 5 colors and I'll show you with this painting that you really don't need any more than that. I went for the primaries, yellow, red and blue, and I added brown and white. It doesn't matter exactly what your primaries look like. For example, my yellow is very pale, which would not be my normal choice for yellow when I use the primaries for a painting. But then, looking at the reference, I imagined a soft yellow tone would add softness to this child's face in combination to a pinkish red tone for the cheeks and a dark blue tone for the brown hair to look real dark. That is my take for this photo and really for this there is no right answer, it's up to you the artist to decide what colors you want to use. Once you have your colors, there is a quick experiment that you can run and that's why here you see me mix colors together on a scrap piece of watercolor paper. I use my primaries to check my skin color will look accurate enough, and it does. Then with red and brown, I check I can get the right tone in those lighter parts of the hair that look brown, but then when you look closely at the reference, there's a touch of red in there. And this color mix will also be useful for the lips, we'll just need to add less brown and more red. Similarly with blue and brown, I make sure that the dark part of the hair can be dark enough and that mixing both of these colors can render good shadows. Since the most noticeable color in hair and skin is brown hair, then it's pink, then just a little bit of yellow undertones. Usually with the primaries, you're not going to be taking risks because they can create all the colors that you want. And by going through this quick experiment, at least you know where you're going with this or that combination. With watercolor pencils, technically, you can just color and then activate the paint. But you'll see that for watercolor pencil portraits, it's going to be more effective to use the swatch technique. For example here, I just prepare the color for the skin from my Caran d'Ache palette, but you can use a scrap piece of watercolor paper instead. For the technique to work at its full potential for skin, you really want to wet the face first and then apply the paint. Otherwise, it will dry very fast. I'm using 100% cotton hot press paper and I'm not wasting any time. I apply the lighter skin tone mix first and then I place a few shadows, but I leave the highlighted parts untouched. And 10 minutes later, I already have a base for the skin that looks smooth and accurate enough to enable me to continue. If it looks strange at this point, it's normal. This is the nature of watercolors and art in general. So stay tuned to see how my next tips transform this painting. And if you need help with watercolor pencil skin tones, I released a 30 minute skin tone tutorial on my Patreon using the primary colors. So if you want to check it out, as well as over 100 video tutorials in real time, you'll find a link in the description of this video. To really see where a painting is going, I find it more useful to treat it as a whole. And that's why before adding more to the skin, I start painting the hair and then the shirt. Each element is dependent on the other if we want a realistic painting, so that's really important. First, because we'll be able to add the right amount of contrast so each part look like they're connected. The ear also is a good example of that. It's skin but there are soft dark shadows that connect it to the hair, so we need to work on both of them rather than finish the skin and then paint the hair, so we can tie them together better. Also, there will be flying hair to add on the neck, the face, and the shirt, so we better be all cut up painting the face so we can add them when we're ready. And once more, this is not looking fantastic yet, but again, no worries. The results will be well worth the patience that goes into painting a portrait. To get this great result that we're looking for, nothing beats layering when we're into realism. So for example here, I'm adding another layer of paint with the swatch technique because it's fast and smooth 
Then the goal here is to finish blocking in all the main colors and first shadows so we can get into more detail with a very good foundation. And that's why once I have this foundation, since it needs some work still, I start adding color directly with the pencils. And like I did with the sketch, I target these main features first to solidify where the painting is going. It will really help you to always keep tabs on the eyes, the nose, and the lips. Then I just start adjusting the skin tone a little bit with yellow and brown because I know both of them will turn into a soft brown and I'll still get these yellow undertones that are important to match the photo. I also start adding some red because I want to make sure the face looks fresh and young, not like that of maybe an older person. So in portrait painting, it's also nice to think about how old the subject is and try to add these important details to render age. To activate watercolor pencil paint, I've taught myself a specific technique with my paper towel in hand and I teach exactly how I do it in many videos here on YouTube and also Patreon and Skillshare. It's really a big part of why I can paint anything with watercolor pencils so easily. So I'll link useful resources in the description of the video so you can find the ones most useful to you. And I'll also link one of my YouTube videos about blending watercolor pencils at the end of this one. With watercolor pencils, we can lift color just like we would with watercolors and you'll see that can come in very handy in a painting. For example here, I know the hair is very dark on the reference, so I'm not afraid to add loads of pigment right away, which usually you would want to avoid. Normally it's better to start light and add the dark colors later, and you will see here it won't matter with our photo and with the type of adjustments we'll bring later. I'm still keeping some highlights by lifting the wet paint with a thirsty paintbrush and that will help to rebuild realism later on, so don't forget you can use this technique. Why watercolor pencils are so awesome for portrait painting is that you can leverage water. Take the eyebrows for instance. If I get the surroundings of the eyebrows wet, then the paint that I add on each eyebrow is going to gently melt into the previous layer and that's how you're not getting the impression of added an eyebrow. It really looks like it belongs. And I try to do the same in the darkest areas of the face, like the hollow parts between the nose ridge and the eyes and the sides of the nose. I really don't want these to dry with hard edges. They need to blend in. I try to be careful and do it in the lips also because unless you are to wear lipstick from lip crayon, normally the edges are soft between the lip and the skin. The portrait is starting to look fantastic but I like to push it a little bit further. And at this stage, a good thing to do is to take a step back and make some adjustments. And for me here, it's correcting the details and color of the hair with a brown pencil and a sharp tip. Then I add shadows with blue, and since I try and take care of each part of the painting, I also add shadows to the ears. I start adding small hair flying away too, but I realize I need to finish this shirt first. You see why the base layer was important, so I go ahead and then I can keep refining the details in the hair. The face needs final shadows and first small details like tiny hair in the eyebrows, and when I was talking about leveraging water earlier, you can see how with watercolor pencil, we can also now leverage the colored pencil aspect of it. Final details are extremely important in portrait painting, even if the style is not that realistic. So again, I start with the main features, the eyes being the most important part. I add more shadows with brown and blue, then I add more yellow and red to balance the skin tone and match it to that of the little girl. After activating all of that and drying it, I love to glaze a color on top of my painting if I notice that I need stronger additions. That's why I add yellow first on certain parts of the skin and then I add red for these pinkish tones in the cheek to look more pronounced. This technique is great to add vibrancy and small color touches. And it's time to add the eyelashes. 
And now look at how adding more of the hair really transforms the solid mass we had before. And because the skin is finished, I can even overlap them on it and use the sharp tip to create realistic tiny hair flying in front of our eyes and nose. And check out what the white pencil can do. You can either dip it in water and add noticeable highlights with a texture no other medium will give you in this way. Or you can just use the pencil as a regular white colored pencil. And this one goes over dark areas really well. So I really don't need much more to recreate the gorgeous highlights on the hair that we saw in the photo and that we're missing in my painting up till now. I hope this demo and those tips really pumped you up to try watercolor pencil portraits. Please let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it. And next, if you want to see how to blend watercolor pencils really well, go watch this video. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.